What's going on everybody, David here. Today we're talking travel. Today's card is the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. But first off, on this channel we talk about travel, exploration, and photography. If that sounds like something interesting to you, please hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you can get future updates on my videos. All right, today we're gonna to talk about the Chase Sapphire Reserve. It's 2019 edition, so any of the updates that have been made, we're gonna talk about that today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so looking at the card, the first thing that I always look at when it comes to any of these cards is the annual fee. So you're gonna have a $450 annual fee, all right? So $450, that is a lot of money, but you need to see if you can get that value. If I can get $450 value every year, then it makes sense to keep the card, okay? Or to get the card, keep the card, however you wanna justify it. Now, um, I think, I also look at this. I also look at vacation. Okay, how much, how much money do I spend on vacation every year? If I spend $450 for vacation every year, then it makes sense to consider getting the card as long as I can get the value, that $450 value out. Okay, all right, so let's look at the sign-up bonus. Sign-up bonus on this card is 50,000 bonus points. That's after spending $4,000 within the first three months. So basically, you need to think, okay, can I spend $4,000 within three months? Because if you can't get the sign-up bonus, it does not make sense to get the card. So kind of know what your spending habits are. If you don't, then wait a few months just to see how much you spend every month. Don't include your mortgage or rent or uh, car payments. Uh, try to see if you can do it without that. Uh, there are ways that you can pay your mortgage with a credit card or pay your, your rent with a credit card, but you're gonna have to pay some additional fees for that. Uh, so just, um, if you can, if you can not use those, it, it works better. Okay, so looking at the sign-up bonus, you get 50,000 points. That's after spending $4,000 within the first three months. Uh, so you need to make sure, just kind of know what your spending habits are so you can you know that you can spend uh, $4,000 within three months and you get the 50,000 bonus points. Now, if you don't think you can spend $4,000 within the first three months, then it doesn't make sense to get the card because that sign-up bonus really gives you a head start, okay? Because you want to be able to get that sign-up bonus and then continue using the card and then you'll earn. So the next year, you'll, you've already earned points so you can use for travel for next year. Uh, but for this year, the 50,000 uh, sign-up bonus will help you um, uh, book your trips this year. All right, so let's move on down here. You're gonna get a $300 uh, annual travel credit. Now, this is really good. You'll get $300 and that's for all travel. So that includes taxis, buses, uh, airfare, of course, hotels, all that good stuff. You're gonna get a $300 travel credit every year. So that already brings your annual fee down to $150. So that's really good. All right, now looking at the uh, the earn possibility on this card, you're going to get three points for every dollar spent. That's going to be at restaurants. That's also going to be on travel. Okay, so that's a that's a good that's a good earn possibility. And this is a card that I have right now, and I keep it. Uh, and the main reason that I use it the majority of the time is because I'm getting three points for every dollar spent. Okay, there are better cards out there, but this card works for me, and I don't have like an Amex Gold or or anything like that, or even an Amex Platinum to use uh, and get the five times points. So this is my go-to card when it comes to uh, these categories. Now you notice it does say worldwide, okay? It says worldwide because not all cards will give you uh, the the maximum, maximum earn possibility. So let's say the Amex Gold is a good example. Uh, it's only US, it's US only. So if I'm booking or if I wanna go to a grocery store and I use this card, I'm gonna get four times points at grocery stores in the US only. So if I'm outside of the US, I'm not gonna get four times points. Same thing with rest restaurants. If I use the Amex Gold and I'm not at a US restaurant, then I'm not gonna get four times points, okay? So this card's across the board, worldwide, anywhere I am, I'm gonna get four times points. Now you're also gonna get 50% more in travel redemption. So let's say I'm using the Ultimate Rewards Portal, okay? There are two ways to to fly or two ways to use it for hotels. Uh, one way would be to go through the Ultimate Rewards portal where I just go in there, type in all the information that I want. I wanna fly from LAX to wherever and then it will show me all the different uh, available uh, flights that I can take, okay? And it'll show me how many points each of those flights are. So I get 50% more if I go through that portal. Or I can book just directly going through a transfer partner. So uh, let's say it's United, I wanna fly somewhere, I wanna go through United. All I do is transfer my points over to United and then find the flight that I want and then book the, book the travel, okay? Now, if you're flying business class, first class, it makes more sense to use, to transfer your points directly to the, the airline, okay? Unless you're getting an amazing deal with the Ultimate Rewards Portal, it makes better sense to transfer it over 
to the transfer partners because that will give you, 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 you get more. So if I'm flying business class, first class, it's going to tell me, okay, it's 70,000 points to fly business class to Thailand. Okay, one way. So then I'll look on there and I'll say, okay, and I transfer my, my points, my 70,000 points over to United, and then I get, a, I get that deal. Now that same ticket, that same seat could cost $3,000, $4,000. So if I go into the portal, it's, they base it more on the, the price of the, of the, the fare. Uh, so if I go onto the portal, it's probably going to give me an enormous, it's, it's going to be a lot more points that I'm going to have to use. Not in all cases, but in some cases it will be. So you can kind of check both. I generally just go straight to the transfer partners uh, and try to work it that way. Okay, so let's look at some of this. And we looked at the 50% more, the one to one point transfer. Okay, this is really important. So you want to understand that uh, you want to make sure you're getting one to one when you transfer your points. So let's say I have my points in uh, my points in the Ultimate Rewards program. I want to transfer it over to United. I transfer it over to United. I get one to one. So if I transfer one point over to United, I'm going to get one point with United. Okay. It doesn't always work that way. So you, you want to make sure you read the fine print and you understand that because you don't want to be in a situation where you transfer 50,000 points over to a transfer partner and then you only get 25,000 points once you've transferred them. Okay. So just make sure you're, you're aware of that. All right, no foreign transaction fees. I always tell people when it comes to transaction fees, no foreign transaction fees, this is huge because it changes the way that I travel. I don't bring a lot of cash with me if I, when I travel. Uh, I don't get money out of the ATM when I travel. So my, my routine usually is I'll bring a little bit of cash. Okay, when I say a little bit, I'll, I'll bring enough, what I think I'll need, okay? Um, and then I use my credit card for all of the purchases when I can use a credit card. So if I'm at a restaurant, hotel, any of that stuff, I'm using my credit card. And then if I have to use cash, that's when the cash comes into play. Because when I get there, what I'll do is I'll do an exchange. So I'll, I'll get the, the local currency and then I have my credit card. And that's it. That's all that I, that's all I do. I try to stay away from going to the ATM. Uh, I just have a regular ATM card. I don't have like a Charles Schwab card. So I do have to pay the foreign, the, the transaction fees and all that. And those can add up. So I try to stay, for, stay away from the ATM. Worst case scenario, I will jump in there and use the ATM. But uh, for the most part, I'm using my credit card uh, for pretty much all of my purchases. These are really important. Uh, when it comes to when you're booking things with your using your travel credit card, uh, you get certain perks that you wouldn't get if you didn't use a, a travel credit card. And some of those perks, if you fly a lot or if you travel a lot, you're going to know that you're going to run into problems uh, every once in a while. Okay. So you'll get the trip cancellation uh, or interruption insurance. So it allows you to, you know, to be reimbursed. Uh, you get the, the auto rental. So if I want to rent a car, I get the primary insurance. Okay. So I can use my credit card and get the primary insurance. I don't have to get the, the insurance through uh, the uh, car rental place or use my personal insurance. I don't have to do that. Okay. The luggage, uh, the lost luggage reimbursement. So you get that. It's up to $3,000 that you can get. Uh, if they lose your luggage, very rarely do they lose, lose your luggage. Like they will misplace your luggage. Uh, and then you find your, you know, they'll, they'll find the luggage and then they'll send it to you. But, uh, if they lose your luggage, then you'll get $3,000 back. Okay. If they, uh, misplace your luggage, you also get like every day after six hours, every day you get like a, a hundred dollar uh, credit. So you can go in and make purchases of like clothes and things like that, that you might need because your luggage is not there yet. Okay. Um, trip delay reimbursement, emergency evacuation and transportation. This is really, really big too. If you're in a, in a, in a foreign country and let's say there's an uprising or something like that and you need to be, you need to leave the country. Okay. You, you get, um, this evacuation uh, credit as well. Uh, some other things too. Uh, let's see. They didn't put it on here. I think it might be in with this, but uh, the medical. So most people, and I, I'm, I have medical in the U.S., but my medical doesn't cover me in other countries. Uh, in some countries it might, but in a lot of countries it doesn't. So you need to know, okay, what do I do in case I get hurt? How do I handle that? If I go to a doctor, if you go to a doctor in another country, you don't have insurance, obviously you have to pay. And so... With uh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you do get a med you do get like up to like twenty five hundred dollars where they will pay uh, for your medical treatment. 
Okay, so, and we all go to these these countries and they have the excursions and all that good stuff and it looks good and you want to get on a horseback or get on a horse or, or do things that you don't normally do in the U.S., you might get injured doing that. And if you do, uh, at, least know, at least you know that you have some type of insurance. Uh, or I wouldn't say you don't have the insurance, but you at least have some way to make those payments if it's like uh, $2,500 or less, then, then you're okay. Uh, because I will tell you, a lot of these countries will not do anything with you if you don't have any money to pay. Uh, because they know that you're traveling from another country, and once you leave there, they're, they're on the hook. They're not going to be able to get their money. Okay, so, all right. Uh, some of the other things here, and these go with a lot of credit cards that you get, but you'll get the additional uh, purchase protection. So if, you have, if um, your equipment gets damaged or anything like that, you have up to 120 days as opposed to like a 30-day uh, and then you also extend your warranty. So let's say you have warranty on a product uh, and the product warranty is one year. Well, you can extend it another year. Okay. Complimentary lounge access. You get to Priority Pass Lounge. Okay, so you can stay at a Priority Pass Lounge. Uh, I love to use the lounge access when I go uh, to the airport uh, because it just allows me to get away from everyone else. <laughs> Not that I don't want to be around people, but you know how airports get. Uh, they're very noisy and there's people all around and whatever. So you can go into a lounge, you can have snacks and uh, Wi-Fi and uh, get some alcohol if you want, drink beverage, other beverages and stuff like that. So it's nice. It's just a getaway. So it makes that overall travel experience that much better because you have a place to go. All right. Uh, the global entry TSA pre-check, you get that uh, fee credit. So that's nice. Uh, luxury hotels and resorts collection. So you do have other hotels. Uh, you have a separate collection of hotels that you can book. Uh, so that's nice. All right. And then you have the 24-7 uh, direct a access to customer service. Uh, so that's good. So all in all, uh, I think I went over pretty much everything when it comes to this card. But uh, all in all, this card is great. And I really like having the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Okay. It works for me. It's always in my wallet. I'm using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and I really like the earn possibility with the card. I really like the fact that you get the $300 travel credit every year uh, and all the other little uh, perks and benefits. Uh, but my question to you is, do you like the card? Will you be getting the card? Do you have the card? Give me some of the pros and cons. Please post in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.